Good morning, everyone. I'm Xu Yuling from Anderson Pedodontic Clinic, a part of Beethoven Orthodontic Group. Today, I present a case of class 3 treatment combined uh, implant site development. This 24 year old female uh, chief complaints was chewing difficulty and multiple teeth missing. From the frontal view, we can see the facial midline and the dental midline were not coordinated. And the teeth number 5, 13, 14, and 19 were missing. From the acoustic view, we can find that the four upper incisors were ill fitting prosthesis. How do we evaluate case severity? We use the American Board of Orthodontics Evaluation Tool, the ABO Discrepancy Index. In this case, we use these indicators to manage it. The main problem of this case is anterior crossbite scoring 18 points. The overbite received 3 points. And the mild crowding got 1 point. On the right side, the molar relation was clearly near class 1. But on the left side, the first molars were missing. The canine revealed a full class 3 relationship. This a lingual cross by in the right premolar area. When we turn to safe analysis, the mandibular, mandibular plane angle was on the borderline of deduction. Midline discrepancy got two points, and the missing four teeth got additional four points. Skeletal asymmetry got three points. So her total DI score was 39 points. For cases score over 20 points, they are considered the severe and the difficult cases. And we convert this systemic evaluation into a problem list. The problem list helps us to guide our thinking of treatment method. Here, <clears throat> we want to focus our discussion on the replacement of missing teeth. We decide to use implant for replacement. So, the question is, where implant should be placed? We start with the mandible. Here you can see the crowding, the first molar missing, and the right shifted in line. So we can extract tooth number 28 for concerning the dental volume and close the, all the space for correcting midline. When we turn to the maxilla, the most common treatment option is to upright the boulder and insert the implant here, but it requires additional surgeries of sinus lift and GBR, uh, considering the low sinus and poor bone level. Since we are orthodontics, we can take advantage of moving tooth and the better bone level of number 12. This way, we can avoid performing sinus lift. After discussion with patient, the pa uh, due to financial concern, the patient pick up this option too. Let's walk you through the treatment plan. We decided to use statement Q brackets, low toe brackets on the upper and high toe brackets on the lower. And the major mechanics will be class 3 elastics. Bone screws will be a backup plan in case the effect of elastics is not good as expected. In addition, we will perform implant site development for number 12. The total treatment process was documented here. We use biter bones on lower incisors for disarticulation, and to solve the anterior cross bite, we use class 3 elastics. However, this turned out to be a mistake. The elastic were too long and took the molar more messily. So what we should have used instead is light short elastic, like two ounce quail from the lower canine to upper premolar. Within four months, the anterior cross by was corrected and we started to develop the implant side by using an open coil spring to move the premolar distally. In 10 months, we successfully moved the first premolar into the space of second premolar. Compared to the original bone level, we can place an implant now. After 18 months of active ortho treatment, 
we are ready for implantation. First, we sent a patient to take a CT scan, and the slice view told us the bone height was 12 millimeter and the buccolingual bone thickness was 6 millimeter. After flap elevation, we use a probe to check if there's 3 millimeter of distance between the crestal bone level and the crown margin. We use a 4 by 11.5 millimeter easy plus implant and notice that 2 millimeter buccal bone thickness was maintained here. Watch out here. There is a small concavity over the buccal side, but good thing is no fenestration was found. So we cover the concavity to use the uh, by using tuberosity graft. After harvesting the tuberosity, first we need to do is to remove epithelium and then suture the graft under the buccal flap. In the 13 first months, all appliances were removed and we are ready to connect the abutment. Here we use the angled abutment because the axis was less than ideal. This is the final result. Notice that the mean line was beautifully corrected. The patient was pleased with this result of chewing function and anterior aesthetics, although the facial mean line and dental mean line are not coordinated. From the superimposition, we can find that the upper incisors were slightly flared and the lower incisors were intruded and tipped lingually, mildly. Now we are going to evaluate the result. On the also side, we use the cast radiograph evaluation form, and on the implant side, we use pin and white score sheet. The ABL ruler is used to measure the finishing cast. The total score was 19 points, which means passing the bar. And the main problems are under these four aspects. And all these issues could be improved by repositioning the brackets in the final stage. Let's talk about the aesthetic results. As to pain aesthetics, the major issues are loss of papilla, or even gingiva, and so patchy soft tissue. If we were to redo this case, we would like to harvest a bigger CTG so we can have more harmonious soft tissue around the implant site and the root coverage of the adjacent teeth. The cause of papilla loss is suspected to, to, is suspected to be the result of moving tooth. When a tooth is moved during the orthodontic treatment, the surrounding gingiva may change. This kind of red patch, we call it Atherton's patch. As Y aesthetics, the major point deduction lies in super gingival crown margin. So we place the feature deeper to compensate this problem. When determining implant position, Dr. Uli Grander has summarized five indicators to guide our thinking. The first, when we place the implant, we should be put it centrally in mesial distal direction. And the most important, the 2B3D rule should be followed. In terms of angulation, the maximum tolerable deviation is 15 degrees. In this case, it was tilted 8 degrees. The possible reason is we use is because we use open coil spring to separate two teeth, and the roots were not in parallel. So we should be careful in this combined case. The distance to adjacent tooth should be at least 1.5 millimeter. So again, if we were to redo this case, we should. Another thing which can improve is to decrease the angulation. The pain, this is a very difficult case. <clears throat> However, we successfully rehabilitated her occlusion with proper occlusal skin with this combined approach. And we are very proud that we can help her achieve this case. She was very satisfied. And I'm also very proud of to be a part of IAOI, and I hope you will join us to uh, <clears throat> think about creating better and simpler treatments for our patients. Thank you for your kind attention.